As trash piles up, the people rise up. Tunisians mourn the death of a demonstrator as a growing waste crisis fuels more unrest. Can a new, unelected prime minister rise to the occasion, or are the country's challenges too big to overcome? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmakers are the protests in Tunisia. Well, it's only been about three months since President Kais Saied shut down parliament, fired the prime minister, and claimed full executive power in Tunisia. But if he was hoping the controversial move, which some describe as a coup, would bring stability, he may be wrong. Tunisians are still protesting, most recently over the reopening of a landfill site in the southern town of Agareb. In September, the Sfax region's main landfill was shut down after public pressure but no contingency plan was put in place. Frustrated, the city's council stopped trash collection, and it's been piling up ever since. Angry residents have been on the streets for weeks, but on Tuesday, their protests took a deadly turn when a 35-year-old was killed after police reportedly fired tear gas to disperse the demonstrators. The Interior Ministry denies that's what happened and says Abdul Razak Lashaib was admitted to the hospital for a completely unrelated health condition. But a Tunisian human rights group blames the security forces, and now his family is mourning his death. Ali, what could my brother have done to be dangerous? He died. In response to Lashaib's death, Tunisia's general trade union called a strike in the Sfax region, declaring Wednesday a day of mourning. The UGTT is a powerful force in the country, boasting about a million members. They want an investigation into what they call the intentional murder of a young man. This latest crisis to hit Tunisia is the first real test for the new prime minister, Najla Boudin Romdane. The relatively unknown university professor was appointed in September, two months after President Kais Saied suspended parliament and sacked then Prime Minister Hisham Mechichi. The president's critics accused him of orchestrating a coup, but many inside the country, fed up with years of successive government failures, welcomed the move. And after naming Najla Romdani Tunisia's first female prime minister, he tasked her with forming a government as quickly as possible. I swear by Almighty God to work sincerely for the good of Tunisia, to respect its constitution and the legislation, to look after its interests and to pledge allegiance to it. Restore hope to citizens in a future which we wish is better than the present and the past, improving living conditions and opening the field for initiatives and investments for all segments. Well, restoring hope to a nation in the midst of so many crises is proving difficult. The Tunisian economy has been in decline for years, but now it's nearing the verge of collapse. Unemployment is at almost 18 percent, inflation stands at more than 6 percent, and at least 600,000 people have dropped below the poverty line as a result of the pandemic. And many Tunisians blame years of political unrest for their plight. <laughs> I was a coach with a good situation, thank God. But since the last five years of tug of war and political battles, my personal income has dropped. I earn only 25% of what I used to earn. I used to earn 1,200 to 1,500 dinars a month, and now 300 dinars. With 300 dinars, how do you live? Well, it's clear many Tunisians are frustrated, but can the prime minister find a way to turn the country's fortunes around. To discuss that now, I'm joined from Tunis by Hatim Beltaif. He is the former head of the political division within Tunisia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From London, we have Ahmed Haroul. He is Tunisia's former youth minister and currently an advisor to the leader of the Anakda party, Rashid Khanouchi. And Youssef Wandel is in Doha. He's a politics professor at Qatar University. Now, we also invited representatives and supporters of the current administration. Unfortunately, uh, none could make it. But we do, fortunately, have our three panelists here today. And I want to go back first uh, to September, uh, when Najla Boudan was uh, first appointed as prime minister. Some saw it as a highly progressive move to put a non-politically affiliated woman at the helm of Tunisian politics. Haitem, was that uh, 
at all? Did it serve at least to boost morale among Tunisians that are hoping for real change with this new government? Actually, as a, the first lady that took such a position in Tunisia, such a political position in Tunisia, it was a positive message to uh, uh, Tunisians and to the world, I think, uh, as we're going on the right path. But the problem uh, is uh, not the political figure who uh, uh, will take uh, the charge of trying to resolve the, the actual problems in, in, in Tunisia, uh, the main problem are the policies that the government will go uh, through and with to resolve these, these, these problems. I think uh, uh, that it's a little bit early to judge uh, 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 the uh, actual prime minister. And we can see that the first challenges uh, faced by the Tunisian government uh, are uh, a bit... Uh, uh, a bit big to uh, to have uh, uh, like uh, uh, the okay. opportunity, yeah, yeah, the, the opportunity to judge them based on what they they, they did. Before you the go only, any further, though, the, which which policies are you referring to? Which policies are problematic, in your opinion? The, uh, uh, actually, uh, I think the economy is uh, is is a bit of a big a big problem now. Uh, the economic situation and uh, the political situation uh, is is a bit of uh, problematic. Uh, uh, now uh, people were waiting for uh, fast, uh, 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 at least uh, steps to be taken uh, towards changing uh, what was being uh, in Tunisia during the last ten years. And even the, uh, the two previous years with with, with the, the actual president, Kais Said, but uh, uh, and the, you know, while the first challenge challenge uh, uh, was like appeared, uh, uh, the, the 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 government went directly to the same uh, uh, solutions, which is mainly deploying the police forces and using the force against the protesters. And this is okay. uh, not a good message for the future. So the same heavy-handedness had is what you think you're witnessing now. Um, let me ask uh, Youssef yeah. Buandel, though, as far as the prime minister is concerned at this point. You know, on the flip side, she has very limited political experience, which some people think is a good thing, having spent, you know, most of her career uh, as an academic and uh, in administrative positions. I mean, so how equipped do you think she and the government are to manage all the challenges in Tunisia right now? Well, I think it's uh, this is a $60 million question. Obviously, the appointment of the first uh, female prime minister in Tunisia and the Arab world is a very good message to uh, women uh, in the Arab world as well as the international community that Tunisia is progressive and this is not something new as far as Tunisia is concerned. Secondly, she doesn't, like you said, she doesn't have any polit previous political experience. She was a university professor. Uh, on the one hand, it works uh, for her that she was not involved uh, with any of the policies of the uh, Ben Ali's, for instance, and also the last 10 years. And I think Mr. Said Qais, uh, the uh, president, wanted to bring somebody new, somebody who was not associated with the former uh, policies. Her role, I would expect it to be that of a coordinator. It will depend on, obviously, her advisors and as well as the government, uh, her own government. The problems that Tunisia uh, is facing at the moment are very, very big. The, I agree with your uh, uh, guest from Tunis that politically the situation is uh, is not very, very uh, stable given that it seems that Tun uh, Tunisia is uh, divided uh, between two lines, those uh, of the pro-president uh, and those uh, against him, especially if we look at the demonstrations that have been going on for the last uh, three months, and especially over the last couple of uh, days, the, heavy, the police heavy handing of the situation does not send a good message to Tunisians uh, in general. But in my opinion, the biggest uh, problem is the economic and social problem that Tunisia is facing, unemployment, 
uh, as of early this year in employment is right. about 18 percent. The inflation yeah. is almost We 7%. actually went through many of the statistics at the top of the show, and I'd like to talk further about the economy uh, in just a minute. Uh, but uh, let me bring uh, Ahmed Galul into the conversation at this point. Um, because I do want to ask you personally how in the Anakta party and the person you advise personally, Rashid Khanoushi, are actually feeling right now. I know, obviously, there was a lot of anger about how Kai Sai did take power and how this new prime minister was, was unelected and yet appointed. But it seems right now that a majority of Tunisians want to give this new leadership a chance. Is Anakta and the kind of deposed leadership ready to accept that? Well, it depends which leadership, because I cannot see a leadership. I think that, um, first of all, it's quite hard to accept and to uh, put uh, the prime minister, the lady prime minister, as responsible for what is happening right now, because the one who is governing and exercising power, and um, and uh, pre I mean, he, he's uh, he's. Heading all the meetings of the uh, of the uh, governments is the president himself. So uh, he is responsible. He is the one who is governing and exercising power, not uh, Boudin. Okay. And uh, the, uh, and this shows how shallow are these choices and these policies, because Mr. Qaisaid is is. Um, as I said, governing the day-to-day -day issues of uh, of what is there. So he's he's been governing, and he is he has the absolute powers for three months. Do you feel right. though that there, you know, there it was said that they will move toward elections. Do you feel that that is you know anywhere in the near future, or do you expect this government to dig in its heels and, and stick around for longer than perhaps you think they should have been? Let's first of all, uh, I mean, clarify what is the question. It is not the question of a government. It is a question of a one man, one rule, one vote, power which is being exercised. We do not have a government which is which has been chosen democratically according to the constitution. We can see that this approach to the public sphere does not lead to resolving the issues of, and the problems of the Tunisian. If we've had a weak democracy before the 25th of July, then we do have a catastrophe after the 25th of July. Okay. And the first step is to open up to all the stakeholders and to have an inclusive dialogue and to go back to the constitution and democracy so that we can start sorting out our problems. Okay, Haitem, I just want to ask you quickly if you actually agree with, with yeah. Ahmed's assessment there. Go ahead. Actually, I totally don't agree with Mr. Ahmed, uh, 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 on, especially when it comes to uh, uh, the point that uh, uh, the, 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 what, what is after the 25th of July is a real catastrophe. I think the uh, political and economic and social catastrophe happened uh, uh, during the last 10 years, uh, including the two years uh, uh, of Mr. Kai Saeed as, as, as a president, because what characterizes the last 10 years in Tunisia is that the corruption, especially, and I, I, I emphasize the word corrupt, corruption, which is behind all the actual problems in Tunisia, took over every, in every aspect uh, uh, in Tunisia, economically, politically, uh, and, and socially. What is what uh, the actual president thought, found himself facing uh, uh, since the last two years, and since he took over the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, at least he gathered all the, the, uh, uh, the powers uh, here in Tunisia uh, in uh, 25th of July, is the fact that that he was, uh, he was facing the impossibility of continuing under uh, uh, the same umbrella of uh, e uh, an apparent uh, democracy, which is not an actual, uh, okay. uh, uh, which was not true. Uh, it was uh, a sort of uh, uh, a message head, 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 hidden to that, which, hid, which was hidden. Yeah, 
Yes. I don't, I, I, we just we have limited time, so I do want to get back to. Uh, I wanted to come back okay. to Yusuf because actually, what the the okay. theme of this program is is about the latest unrest in Tunisia and then the strikes and protests okay. that we're seeing. Yusuf Wanda, let me ask you: um, Are the strikes and protests right now are they fully justified? Uh, because there had been questions around, you know, whether Tunisians are simply expecting too much at too difficult a time. You yourself said these challenges right now are huge for any government to take on. Okay, I think uh, this uh, the, 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 the classic theories about social movements tell us that governments are at their weakest points when they are trying to reform. Obviously, uh, the president of Tunisia is, has been saying that he wants to reform the system. He is fighting corruption and so on and so forth. While I agree with what... Uh, your guests said about the performance of Kais Saied. Let's not forget that over the last almost two years, the country and the world has been under a huge pandemic, COVID-19, that did not help uh, Tunisia as well as other countries in the world. I am not necessarily looking for excuses for Mr. Saied, but let's not uh, let's put uh, his performance into perspective. Obviously, when the, revo when the uh, Tunisian revolution won and Ben Ali disappeared, people, rightly so, expect uh, too much uh, too soon, whereas results can be achieved over a particular point of time, let's say two, three years, four years. The fact that uh, Kais Saied, for instance, suspended the, uh, the government, uh, suspended parliament and so on and so forth, that the country has been living in a political vacuum and he has been ruling uh, by decree that, is not, that did not help uh, the political process and improving the situation. Let's not forget that there are also other forces uh, behind that will want Tunisia to fail in its transition uh, to democracy. The f I think what the people are doing is very much uh, justified. We saw, for instance... Which forces that wanted to fail? I, in every revolution, there are anti-revolution forces. There are so many people out there, either inside Tunisia or outside Tunisia, who would want Tunisia to revert back to the old mm -hmm. regimes. They want, I would, uh, I would argue that what is going on in Tunisia is A, the people who are demonstrating to improve their social, social and economic conditions and so on and so forth, but there might be forces outside and also inside Tunisia who would want Tunisia to fail its uh, okay. It's in a nascent democracy. Ahmed, let me ask you this. I mean, revolutionary unrest in Tunisia, it wasn't just a result of dissatisfaction with, with leadership. It was also about abuses by police and security forces that should have been addressed via new government. First of all, do you think anyone has really taken on the very serious challenge of addressing that? I don't think that uh, those who are governing right now have any means or power or, or, uh, or capability of addressing the challenges which the country is facing. And let me also put it in this way. I mean, we cannot just this system because of the last 10 years. I mean, our memory goes beyond that. And the economic crisis in which the country has gone or has started, it has started in 1999 and got towards 2008. And then we have the, re the revolution. It is true, the, change did, the, the expected change did not happen as fast as, the, as it is, but what Mr. Kaysaid is doing is just making things worse. I do not think and do not believe that if he continues in his path, he will bring any good for the Tunisians. Okay. He will just make things uh, and we worse. Understand and I do not think that he's capable of overcoming this We challenge. understand why you would feel that way as well. But I, I am asking specifically about uh, the power of the police and the security forces. Um, Haytam, I'll, I'll address this to you. Just how ingrained uh, is this abuse of power within security forces and the police? And is there a risk now that the new government might use those security forces and their often corrupt strength to his or her advantage? 
the abuse of uh, the abuse of uh, use of the uh, police force here in Tunisia is uh, uh, is in continuity with what was happening during the last 60 years since the only solution presented by each government and every government uh, since the independence here in Tunisia is to face uh, 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 every uh, uh, social uh, protesting uh, through the uh, police forces which the main rule is to protect the uh, political regime not to uh, protect the citizens and this is not these are not my words these are the common words here in Tunisia that every young uh, person uh, keeps repeating and keeps seeing. Let me go back to January uh, uh, 2000, uh, 2021. Uh, 2,000 uh, young uh, men and ladies were arrested during the uh, protests uh, uh, on the government led by, uh, 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 for example, a Nahda party. And if we go back to 2008, we will find that it there was, was no the government same. which has been led by Nahda. Just, just we need to uh, criticize because Al Mishisi yeah, it has, every, was was chosen by Mr. Qaysayed and Nahda had no minister yeah. in that government. So you cannot. It is. It has been supported. Yes, no, no, but no, it is no, not I'm, led. I'm, I'm, need to be precise, there is, please. There is, there, there is a different. There is there is a bit difference. Yeah, I know. I can understand your position, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ahmed. Since uh, uh, I know that was the uh, uh, same argument presented by the Nahda uh, uh, party, and I'm not accusing the Nahda party mainly. I'm talking about how the political system is uh, uh, works here in Tunisia. During the last 10 years, Nahda was really governing by uh, proxies, through proxies. Uh, uh, this 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 approach. This is, this yeah, is this approach, I'm we sorry. Saw it. Yeah, we saw it. I'm sorry to to, to no, interrupt you. Uh, not, yeah, yeah. The main the, this, the main point is that not I'm not blaming any uh, 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 exact you know. Uh, just when you say something, just be precise on it. I'm just I'm just I'm just telling what is really happening and what uh, 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 the difference between the messages that another party want to send internally and externally. To uh, 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 now, the okay. focus of yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there please, is, there is a please do wrap up. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go back to the police, uh, to the police abuses. Uh, it's a con in, in continuity with what happened during uh, uh, okay you know, a long period. Uh, uh, Fair now, enough. We're not talking about just yeah. We're not just talking about the last ten years. We're talking about six years of the uh, police abuses. Okay. Uh, we just have two minutes left, and I said I would address the economy. It's obviously one of the fundamental challenges that this government is facing right now. Yusuf, as far as the economy is concerned, uh, Tunisia has actually restarted talks with the IMF over a bailout package. Uh, but just a few hours ago, the UGTT union says it rejects any plans to cut subsidies in spite of international lenders demanding reforms. Does this help protect workers, do you think, or does that leave Tunisia's economy in an even more precarious position? Well, th these contradictions exist. I mean, Tunisia, like you said, needs at least $3 billion for the remainder of 2021. And where to get this money from, international institutions would obviously ask for some sort of reforms, cut subsidies, and so on and so forth, prices will go up and it will hit the even the middle classes will be hit, that will create more tensions, that will create more discontent, and people will go on to do to the streets again. I think it's a very, very delicate uh, situation uh, to be in. I understand recently that Algeria has offered to help Tunisia financially with a, a, a small amount of money, I think it's $500, $500 million, which is nowhere near what Tunisia needs at the moment. I think Tunisia is going through a very, very difficult uh, uh, situation at the moment. It needs to be played very, very carefully. It needs to look at its need for money from the international institutions, but also take into account what the uh, trade union in Tunisia is saying and what the people of Tunisia are saying, because I don't think Tunisians would afford any more economic 
hardships that would signal attain, that would be uh, signal the beginning of the end of Qais Saeed if it goes like this. Okay. Do you personally see any light at the end of the tun tunnel economically? Uh, why not? I, it, I mean, there, there, there would be other countries, for, for instance, in the Middle East, like Qatar has always stood by Tunisia. Other Middle Eastern countries can help with more generous terms in terms of uh, loans and so on and so forth to help Tunisia because it's vital that Tunisia stability is achieved. Uh, Algeria, for instance, it's in, our, in uh, its interest that uh, Tunisia is stable. I think it's not a lost cause, but okay. it's a very, very difficult uh, war to win. Yusuf Wandel, Haitem Taif, and Ahmed Galoul, thank you both, all three of you, so much for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this edition of the Newsmakers. We thank, of course, our viewers as well for being with us. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at the underscore Newsmakers, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.